Hey guys, welcome to episode 33. Let's see if I can zoom up in on the top of that plant there. You see the little white guy with the black eye? That is one of my P. Clarkey crayfish. So you can see they are very small. Um, I think the largest one is only about an inch and uh, most of the uh, the uh, molly fry are actually larger than them at this point the ones that are smaller than them are in this uh, uh, hatching container here so uh, I'm not too worried about any of the fish getting eaten by the crayfish at this point in time because their claws are really small um, so that's cool I'm glad I found one I'm glad I could show you kind of a better shot of what they look like all of the others are still hiding pretty well in there and, and they're fairly difficult to find but uh, if I sit here long enough searching uh, I'm able to find most of them um, but I'm just kind of counting on all seven of them still being in there because uh, I don't think anything in there is going to eat them at this time. Um, the only other thing I do need to worry about is their ability to climb. Um, they can climb up airline hoses. They can climb up the, the silicone on the edges of the, the aquarium. They can definitely climb up the background since I have uh, such a, an extensive background in this tank. Um, and what that will allow them to do is possibly escape. Um, they can breathe above water for a while, and they are known to cross um, land um, out of water. So um, a lot of people have reported that, that crayfish do try to find their ways out of tanks. They're escape artists, and uh, <clears throat> I'll just have to watch for that. And there's, there's not a whole lot I can do about it, but... Uh, hopefully it doesn't happen. Hopefully they, they like living where they are. Um, what I wanted to do since uh, last the last video talked about um, some of the uh, some of the, the projects I had going on in the mangrove tank was to just kind of go through um, a list of the major and minor uh, aquatic plant nutrients that I'm going to look for in a fertilizer before I decide to uh, to set up my auto doser. So I've got a, a web page pulled up and I'll just kind of go through the list. Um, for terrestrial plants, uh, basically all, all that they need is nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And those are, those are pretty readily available in any of the, the regular uh, fertilizers that you would get um, at like a home improvement store. But um, aquatic plants are a little bit different in that they need to absorb uh, more types of nutrients. Uh, so nitrogen is still on the list. Uh, it's a pretty big one. Phosphorus is still on the list. Uh, potassium is still on the list as well and those are the ones that uh, ha have the most likelihood of, of having a deficiency for um, in in the plants uh, but also um, to take note of would be calcium uh, and that is supplied by uh, some of the the crushed uh, coral substrate you can get calcium from that uh, magnesium um, which is part of the the chlorophyll cell uh, so it's it's fairly important. Um, sulfur, iron, which is uh, definitely uh, provided by a lot of the uh, the aquarium substrates. You'll hear a lot of people talking about iron deficiency. And if you have aquatic plants in a tank without any substrate uh, and you're not dosing iron, um, that's that's typically going to be a big limiting factor. Um, and uh, you'll see that a lot of the, uh, the, the aquatic uh, plant additives, all it is basically is, is iron um, because that, that's one of the limiting factors there. But with, with a good substrate, you shouldn't have any iron problems. I believe that's, that's one of the things that, that limited and, and ended up killing uh, the first batch of mangroves I had. So um, I'm pretty stoked that I won't run into that problem again. Um, so those are kind of the uh, the major nutrients that plants need, 
and uh, aquatic plants need. And then some of the minor uh, minerals that they need uh, include chlorine, copper, mag manganese, uh, zinc, um, boron, and uh, molly benum. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but it says it says that most of those uh, minor nutrients um, are can, can be attained just through um, frequent water changes uh, and and feeding your uh, your your uh, aquarium wastewater through the tank. So um, a lot of those nutrients will be uh, available in trace amounts in fish food or turtle food um, and in the resulting waste and the wastewater. Um, so that's kind of a quick breakdown of um, nutrients. And uh, here again is the, uh, the mangrove tank with uh, the substrate added it it's a good um two inches probably in in depth um overall it's it's not really flattened out it's kind of uh all bumpy down there but um what you will see is some of the roots are actually starting to touch uh which is cool so so what i'm going to do is uh let those kind of touch down uh in as many places as they possibly can um, I might raise the water level up a little bit actually to kind of um, make them grow a little bit more before they touch down. But when they do, uh, I want to see what kind of root growth takes off um, underneath the soil. Uh, because I've definitely seen the type of root growth that takes off above the soil. Um, and what you do is you, you get these big prop roots and then if you see there on that one you see the little white roots i know it's it's not focusing very well uh but there are there are white uh roots that are uh offshoots of of those prop roots and what i'm hoping is um once those once those prop roots touch down i'm hoping a lot of those those lateral rootlets will form underneath the soil um to uptake more nutrients and bring them uh back to the plant uh, so we'll see how that does. I'm really hoping that once they ground themselves, they, they start to take off. Um, and if that happens, I might have to raise these lights up a little bit uh, to give them some more room to grow. But that might be wishful thinking. I know this tank is very small for, um, for the amount of plants in here. So again, um, I'm going to watch the leaves very closely for any signs of distress um, and now that I've kind of clued into the, uh, the nutrients that these things require, um, I can do a better job at supplying them in the appropriate quantity to, uh, to keep them healthy. And, uh, when I start to see problems, hopefully I can adjust for those problems before they get out of control and end up killing everything. Um, but these guys are really good at uptaking nutrients. They're very efficient at it. Um, so I'll be, ha I'll have to be really diligent because they could starve each other, uh, really quickly, but, uh, turtles are doing good. Um, I guess I'm at the point where, um, I'm actually looking into different stock tank options and, uh, I just moved into this apartment and I, as you can see, I, I don't really have the room for a stock tank right now. Um, nor will I have the room uh, in this apartment for a stock tank. So uh, I, I probably won't end up purchasing one for the next year or so. But uh, as you can see, these guys are growing like crazy. And uh, these guys are our monsters already. Uh, and they, they just keep on growing. And there's really no space uh, left in this tank. Um, and these guys are outgrowing their tank uh, rapidly. So... Uh, I am doing some research on uh, different stock tanks, uh, different sizes, different brands, uh, all the different dimensions and weights, and I'm going to uh, provide a spreadsheet here shortly on uh, Turtle Forum, and I'll also post it um, in one of my video updates uh, coming up, which includes some of that information. So if anyone else is looking for a stock tank, um, you know, I'm, I'm also looking and uh, I'm, I'm going to do some research for you and uh, I'll supply my results so you can find uh, the, best, the best price per gallon or the largest or the, 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 the stock tank that has the correct dimensions for, for where you need. 
Uh, but I have seen some very interesting stock tanks. The ones that people keep recommending for turtles are the Rubbermaid stock tanks. And if you remember the, the Check Me 21 stock tank video, he has a 300 gallon Rubbermaid. That's the older version, the gray, the gray version. Uh, they make a, a black version now, which is a little bit lighter. Uh, it's still just as structurally sound. But uh, the Rubbermaids are the ones that are recommended a lot. Um, but I have seen um, other brands, other manufacturers, and, and some of those stock tanks, uh, they're made of poly plastic, and uh, they go up to 1,000 gallons. 1,100 gallons, I think, is the largest stock tank that I saw online and just to give you an idea of how big that would be uh, I believe this is a nine foot ceiling here and and some of those tanks are nine feet in diameter they're round um, so it would basically go from the floor all the way to the ceiling round so it would, it would take up basically the entire screen here uh, of the video that you're watching that's an enormous enormous stock tank and I, I believe they're two feet deep maybe a little bit maybe a little bit more um, so that's, that's definitely plenty of room for turtles. Uh, obviously you would need uh, a greenhouse at that point or a very large basement to be able to accommodate something that large, but, um, you could put, um, a, a good, a good number of turtles in something that large. Uh, I don't even want to guess how many turtles you could put in there. Uh, you know, it'd probably be somewhere between 20 and 30 would probably fit in, in something that that large, uh, which you're never going to replicate in an aquarium. This is 125 gallons. This is the largest glass aquarium I would ever consider buying. And uh, it's it's going to have a, a tough time supporting two or three full-grown uh, diamondback terrapins. So as as this can be a show tank, it's, it's not really um, realistic um, for keeping large numbers of turtles or breeding groups of turtles. Um, because the cost per gallon is just way too high. And uh, I've seen some stock tanks so far uh, in my research, and uh, some of them get down to like 33 cents per gallon, which is fantastic because I believe um, the, the smaller aquariums, like the 55 gallon, uh, Petco does a, a dollar per gallon sale on them once a year. So, you know, 55 gallons, $55. Eh, it's not bad, but you can't really keep a turtle in it for for much more than you know six or eight months. Um, but when you get up to this size, it's more like two dollars a gallon. And if you go acrylic, and if you go larger than this, you're talking three, four, five dollars per gallon, perhaps. It gets really expensive. And the only thing that makes sense after a, a 125 is definitely going to be a stock tank. So. Um, Stay tuned for uh, for news about that and uh, and my spreadsheet that I'm going to release and uh, keep watching for updates on the auto doser. I'm uh, I'm going to silicone that tube in and then uh, I'll probably run another test to see you know how many CCs uh, I can dispense in a 24-hour period and then what I'll do is I'll try to work out. Um, you know, depending on the type of fertilizer I get, um, what kind of mixture, what kind of strength I need um, in, say, a, a gallon or a two-gallon pail of water um, with fertilizers added to to enable these plants to have everything that they need um, to grow um, steadily. So that's kind of on the horizon, um, and that's about all I have for right now. So. Keep watching, subscribe, let me know what you guys want to see, and uh, I'll just keep working on my crazy projects. Alright guys, I'll see you later.